Hey there, John here. We are so glad you're listening to the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. If you're new to the show, I hope you find something here you'll enjoy and that gives you a reason to come back. If you've been listening for a little while or a long while, as is the case with so many of you, I want to ask a favor. Would you consider introducing us to just one friend this week? There's really no better method of advertising than word of mouth. Pick a friend who shares your sense of humor or interests, even if they don't know what a podcast is, and tell them why our show has become a regular listening for you. And be bold. Help them get a podcast app on their phone and walk them through how to subscribe to the show. We love that you're here and would greatly appreciate your recommendation. Thanks for your time. Now, let's get on with the show. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Hi, this is Curl Bro, and I support Gen X Grown Up on Patreon, and you should too. And if you don't, I hope you leave enough room for my fists, because I'm going to ram it in your stomach and break your spine. Just go to genxgrownup.com slash Patreon to sign up today. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 163 of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me, as always, of course, is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, wouldn't be a show without Mo. How's it going, Mo? Yeah, going okay. How's everybody else doing? Good enough to do a podcast, apparently. <laughs> in the same place at the same time, once again. In this episode, we're going to find out if Seth MacFarlane's teddy bear films have enough stuffing to fill out a TV series. <laughs> I know. Take a legendary arcade class on the go with a new handheld gadget and revisit the world of Portal with a new mod that breathes fresh life into Aperture Labs. We'll have those topics and many more coming up in this episode. First, though, it is time for some fourth listener email. Look, there's the three of us. We know we're going to listen. We hope. And if anybody else takes time to listen and writes in to let us know about it, that's our fourth listener. And the fourth listener this time around is JL, who dropped us a line. The subject line of his email was, my Atari mind blown. So, mm, okay. <laughs> We're off to a great start, though, so that's good. Uh, here's what Jay has to say. What's up, guys? Longtime listener, Patreoner, and first or second time fourth listener. Cool. Nice. Thank you. And Patreon. <laughs> nice. Yep. Uh, your vids on expanding the Atari Game Station Pro was pure magic. Mm. Wow. <laughs> right? It took me a good few hours to get through it step by step, organizing the ROMs by platform, etc. And now, thanks to you guys and becoming what I'll call Atari advisors, I've never <laughs> been happier. So... <laughs> <laughs> that, I've done a lot of videos on that Game Station Pro, and I think the, the expansion one put like more than ten thousand games on it, so that you could just play at your heart's yeah. desire. It ships with two hundred, but you, you don't have to stop there. So uh, if you're if you're new to the party, it's what JL is talking about because we got that cool gadget, and then we want to hack it and do more cool stuff with it. So I like his term Atari advisors. I think we need to reach out to Atari and see if we can't get some paid positions with yeah, that. Just lock that in. It sounds like official. It does. I like it. Yeah, let's make it yeah. authoritative. I'm gonna go ahead and say we are. Atari advisors, and then you can work on making it official. So I think that okay. we'll just, we're going to go, we're going to adopt it and then let them figure it out eventually. <laughs> Jay goes on to say, I haven't found one gaming or controller issue yet. Well, there are, there are some to find. Not everything works perfectly. And I was able to find some groups of games by themselves to ramp up the 10,000 plus games as well. I found an NES 1201 ROM that just boom, got me 1200 games in one all by itself. Wow. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know those were out there, but apparently somebody's mushed all the ROMs into one big image. So it's just one to go into. And then Makes it's got sense. its own menu. Yeah, why not? Right. Like I've seen like the two and one and three and ones, but at least somebody has gone nuts. Like, like <laughs> we're going nuts with the GSP. Uh, Jay wraps it up saying, I am up to about 13,800 games so far. Oh, Thanks, man. guys. Made my year. Wow. That was wow. nice. <laughs> 
there's a lot of fun to be had. Like these plug and plays are cool, but when you can tweak them and do more stuff with them, first you feel like like you cracked a secret code. It was not that complex, mm-hmm. but you kind of like. And then you got one over, like on the man. Like he wanted me to play yeah. these games. I'm playing what I want on this thing. <laughs> it is. Cool. Yeah, I think in this case though, the man was perfectly okay with us playing extra games, considering they put the SD cards oh, yeah, on. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah, right. The man was a keeping us down. The man just made right. us figure, do the do the homework exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. We we're hey, we're happy that we made your year. We're uh, glad that you uh, found some value in the videos that we put out. We certainly appreciate that you take time to write in and let us know what you think of what we are doing here on Gen X Grown Up. If you would like your email featured here on the show, it is drop dead easy. All you have to do is hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. Read every single email, and most of them, like Jay's, will eventually make the show. Okay, with that good business behind us, let's jump into the body of episode 163 after this quick break. If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. Welch's new squeezable jellies stop the blops. These are the blops. New Welch's squeezables let you spread the jelly without the messy blops. They're neat. Squeezable grape jelly. And strawberry preserves. And taste Welch's raspberry apple and apple grape. Welch stops the blops. New Welch's squeezables. Five yummy flavors made Welch's way. All right, it is time to get the ball rolling talking about media. Now, this could be comics or music or film or television or whatever you have been enjoying in the world of media. And uh, Mo, I would like to start with you. What have you been enjoying? Oh, there's a new series on Netflix called The Brother's Son, which Hmm. attracted me because it has Michelle Yeoh in it, which Mm -hmm. anything she has in it, I'm definitely going to watch. My (laughs) girlfriend totally understands. (laughs) (laughs) We all get it. She doesn't blame me at all for that. Oh, yeah, we all get it. (laughs) But basically, it's it's a action movie like it's like some martial arts and stuff in it in taipei there's like the whole triad you know the chinese mafia thing and there's a a father and son and then you find out at some point the father basically gets shot and so the son has to take over and he finds out that his younger brother and mom have been sent away 15 years earlier to america so now he's worried about his brother's safety so he has to go there now his brother left china when he was like four or five you know, and matter of fact, some of the scenes are really funny because people are speaking Chinese around him. And he's like, I got every fifth word. You know? <laughs> he's like, what do you say? He says something about trees and, and I don't understand, <laughs> which actually I have a lot of friends growing up that that's exactly what happened to him after they've been here for a while. But uh, so essentially he's going there and then there's a whole plot about people trying to take over the mafia and underworld and all that fun stuff. Then you have the brother who has is completely clueless that he was even his family was even involved in any of this stuff. Hmm. And then the brother who was left behind was basically his father trained him to be like the enforcer so he's like a total badass kind of guy and michelle yo's the mom obviously she's in america and it's funny it's smart like the humor mm-hmm. in it i think is really smart the action scenes are just phenomenal i mean there's just, just really exciting action scenes and fight scenes in it but they didn't go overboard with it too which i liked like it was like every place there was a fight it made sense like it wasn't like gratuitous you know oh he's running on the street and three guys jump him for no apparent reason you know that kind of thing mm-hmm. um and michelle yo and the, the performances were just really really great now, this might sound like a funny question but i've never seen the trailer or anything about this mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. and the way you described it i think the answer to this question could go any direction so i'm not sure what kind of movie is this is this a drama is it a comedy is it serious because you said there's funny stuff in it it's just for yeah, re- yeah. relief it's a series it's like a, oh it's a series it's not a yes. film. Okay, that yes. was a movie. All right. Yes, it's All right. eight episodes. All right. And it's a probably comedy action. Okay, so it's a light action. It's like not like super greedy, godfathery kind of dark. No, no, it's not dark. It's, okay. it's not very dark. Okay. And the things in it, I mean, things that I laugh about because there's a whole like, tense scene in it and stuff happens. 
And Michelle Yeoh looks over and she's like, you got the wrong kind of milk, you know, which is something my mom would say in that situation. Like she'd be like, just holy. That's what's important whole- to her at that moment. <laughs> right. Not the other thing. Right. Just, you, you got the wrong thing at the store, uh, which is like, you know, very, I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. Let me say, I burned through the whole thing. I think it's eight episodes. I think I believe mm. total. I burned through all of them in about a week. I watched like one or two a day on that one. And it's, like I said, definitely worth your time. Okay. The brother's son on the brother's son. Right. So. I hadn't heard of it at all. So that's cool. Oh, cool. There you go. So John, actually you saw something I have heard of and I'm really interested to see what she thought of it. Oh yeah. So let me just start by saying, I'm going to talk about a walking, talking, living, breathing teddy bear that you first saw in films by Seth MacFarlane. Right. I was looking forward to it. Maybe a couple for a couple shows called Ted. It's just the movies are called Ted and Ted too. Mm-hmm. So Seth MacFarlane was asked to make a television series about this Ted teddy bear. And the number one question I had was, how do you make this into a series? It's a prequel. So we're going back. So uh, what Marky Mark played, uh, played John, his buddy, who had mm-hmm. wished him into existence. This goes back to when John was in, I guess, high school is where he's at. He yeah, maybe he's junior. Yeah, 16. he's in high okay. school. And the, the Ted thing is over. So a quick recap of what the films happened. At, when he was a little boy, he wished upon a star for his teddy bear to come to life. And it did. And then he became a superstar. So Ted was now, he was like a celebrity in the world over. And then everybody just kind of got over it. And now he's just, <laughs> just a living Ted. teddy bear in the world that lives with this family. First, I should tell you, it's a who's who of Orville characters. It's like Seth oh, MacFarlane's yeah. repertory theater. Oh, right? really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So Scott Grimes, who played the navigator in the Orville, is the dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the young lady uh, who played the doctor in in the Orville? Uh, can think of her name, but she was also in Deep Space Nine for a while. Anyway, she is the, the principal. So it's a bunch of people that you've seen. And even the young man they're playing, John, mm-hmm. uh, he was uh, an alien on the Orville. So these are all oh, like really? Seth MacFarlane's <laughs> people that he knows he brought in. I was interested in this because I think the Ted movies are cute, but I also didn't know if it could carry a series like this. I'll just go ahead and not waste your time and tell you, stop listening to the podcast and go watch Ted. It is so good. (laughs) I'm willing for you to push pause now to believe the things I'm about to tell you. I guess what it is, is that there's something about Seth MacFarlane's humor that he is not afraid he can thread that needle. He does not pull punches. He does not worry about political correctness. And yet he does it with such a tongue in cheek way that it could offend if you work hard to be offended. But it's so funny and it's so refreshing after I see so many comedies that are tiptoeing around offending people. Well, first, I got to get a free pass because this is set back in, I guess, the, the 80s. And so 91. it's a it's a 91. different time. Is okay. it ninety one? Where do you go? George knows more yeah. about it than I do, apparently, which is great. I have what it's only seven episodes. It's set up as a limited series, but the writing, the characters you care about, each of these people, the mom, the dad, they have a history, they have a story. Yes, it's ridiculously funny. <laughs> yes, everyone is a caricature. Yes, it is tons of profanity because it's supposed to be Boston, and that's how they were apparently, you know, in the nineties, <laughs> and like even in the family, they're throwing throwing F words around at the dining room table in the pilot. They're trying to trick the mom into cussing. And she says, come on, mom, just say shit one time. And she goes, Oh, shoot. <laughs> she just <laughs> refuses. And the, the Ted lines, he is so, so absolutely well written and performed formed in a way that you believe he's alive and you're almost sad that he's not alive. I've treated this series like I did Firefly. I have refused to watch the last episode until they give me some more because I'm so excited (laughs) that it was so good. And now I'm so sad that I burned through the whole thing. It is really funny and really good. And it will get a tear out of you in a few episodes because it just is that heartfelt. It's everything. I don't know what more you could ask for. It's so good. So is this a a one and done sort of series or are they planning to make more? (laughs) It was supposed to be, but I'm already hearing that it's getting such critical acclaim and rave reviews that they're talking about maybe doing more. Okay. I mean, did, did, did that's for not that? unheard of for yeah. Seth MacFarlane. That's the way the Orville was. I so know. Orville was going to be true. one and done. And then yep. they ended up doing like three seasons plus comic books. So, yeah. Now, what's amusing to me is that uh, we saw some people over in our Discord server posting some Instagram and TikTok reels snippets from that. And I even saw something, George, you said in response to that. You're like, I didn't care about this series until I saw this. <laughs> in our Discord server, genxgrownup.com slash Discord for you guys mm-hmm. who want to go over there join if you haven't already people were posting and they were posting links to facebook that it was 
let me explain real quickly. Those links don't play well in Discord for some reason. You yeah. have to click yeah. it, go over to Facebook, log in, all this crap. But I was like, okay, John's going to talk about this thing. And they have, uh, I'll do the extra few clicks worth of work and look at this trailer <laughs> or this little clip. And it was a clip where Ted is essentially outing this like mean girl bitch in a classroom exactly right. for yep. she's mean to a teacher in the classroom at the time in this clip mm-hmm. or he just and it's not he's not like yelling at her or being nope. profane he's just everything he's saying is delivered in a manner of fact tone like yeah we all noticed that you got that nose job during the summer because we knew <laughs> that when you tried to kiss the other guy you poked him in the eye with your big long nose we none of us got fooled but and he just goes on and on for like two right. or three minutes he destroys her i got done watching that clip and john already said it i I immediately went back to Discord and said, okay, I didn't really have an interest in watching the series, but now I'm all in. And I've watched three of the first seven episodes so far. And you're right, John. It's fucking awesome. It's it really, is. really good. I didn't know Seth MacFarlane was going to be a part of it. I didn't know he was going to do the mm-hmm. voice. You didn't really talk about that in your looking forward to stuff. Right. So yeah. I had very low expectations because if it's not Seth MacFarlane and it's not Mark Wahlberg, who gives a shit? That yeah. was what made the first movie great. Second movie, eh. Okay. But yeah. the the magic is still there. That guy right. they have been playing 16-year-old John, that kid is an awesome actor. The mother who you didn't mention, John, she's actually very famous from a couple of movies um, called Waiting. Back in the day, there were some independent oh, okay. films about mm-hmm. people who were waiters in a oh. Applebee style restaurant. Was she in that? Okay, I saw yeah, those films. She's, oh, yeah. She's the waitress who is really mean and cruel to all mm. the other patrons in the mm. establishment or to all the other waiters, but not to the customers. Anyway, yeah. great series. Love it. I'm glad you recommended it. I'm glad somebody posted <laughs> the link. Otherwise, I would have missed it. Oh, and you said the young man they have playing John is 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about him. Sometimes an actor just hits you. He's my favorite new young actor. Probably my last like favorite new youngish actor that I watched kind of grow up on on screen was Adam Driver. Like he came out of nowhere and I'm like, this guy looks like he has something. And he turned out to be this amazing actor. Yeah. The young man, I I don't know his name off the top of my head, but I'm going to learn it because (laughs) he is. There you go. He can, (laughs) he, he can behave and emote he can have humor he can he has it all and there's something about he has that charisma on screen like you want to see what he's going to do and his his facial reaction his expressions uh, I, I predict he's going to go not far. just his own thing but he has found a way to emulate the preliminary mark Wahlbergisms that are in the first film you oh, sure. See the Little mimicry mannerisms, the way he develops that character. It's like this is how that character started, and you see how it got to Mark Wahlberg's 30 to 35 mm-hmm. year old later on here at 16. You see those little things like when he's talking with Ted back and forth, and they have mm-hmm. matter of fact discussions. The, the, the banter, that are they just go off on tangents topics. and making stuff yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. And you can <laughs> see he's currently a 16 year old nerd, but you can see a little Wahlberg swagger develop. Just throughout a little the series, bit. Yeah. just a little. If you liked Ted at all, if you like that kind of humor, do not miss this series. It's on Peacock, seven episodes. They're all short. It's going to be over way too fast. So savor it. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> okay, George, I, I'm done raving about Ted. I could keep talking about how great it is, but let me let you move along and talk about something you were looking forward to a few episodes ago, a film. Yeah. Uh, just like you, you were looking forward to Ted a while back. Um, I was looking forward to a movie. Obviously, I haven't been able to go to the theater in a long time, so I had to wait till this thing hit streaming services. Mm-hmm. But it was one that was interesting because you guys know I love sports ball things. And uh, <laughs> spe- specifically over the last few years, I've really gotten into soccer. This movie is called Next Goal Wins, and it's inspired by true mm-hmm. events. The main star of the film is Michael Fassbender. Uh, You guys know him as uh, Magneto from the Mm -hmm. early X-Men film, not the first X-Men films, but the younger younger Mm -hmm. X-Men films. Um, He's done a whole bunch of stuff since then, obviously. Uh, He was in Glorious Bastards. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, Taika Waititi, however, is the main driving force behind the film. And he's in the first scene and a scene toward the end. That's it. That's the only times you get to see him in the movie. This movie tells the story of the National American Samoa 
soccer team. <laughs> now, I had oh, to be yeah. specific about, about yeah. that because Taiko Waititi makes the point there are two Samoas in the world. There's two countries. There's Samoa proper and there's American Samoa. This yeah. is American Samoa, which is apparently the poor stepchild of the Samoan mm. <laughs> islands. <laughs> um, they talk a little bit at the beginning about the about a little bit of the rivalry among all the Pacific Island nations. I mean, a lot of those people are distant cousins, you know, traveling between the islands and stuff, but they do have some rivalries. It starts off by telling how this country got its reputation in the world of soccer. They went to a World Cup qualifying game against Australia, and they lost that game. Now, this is not an American football score. This is a football score. A soccer score. 31 yeah. to nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know much about soccer, but I know that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, if you saw that in American football, you go like, damn, that team got their ass handed to them. Right. You see that in soccer, and you're like, what the hell happened? Was, wait, was there even another the team out there? <laughs> right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. That's one goal at a time, right? There's no like, That's one goal yeah. at a time. That's 31 goals were scored. <laughs> Dang. That's in a this goal every game. three minutes, right? It's Holy pretty cow. bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> anyway, that's where you start the movie from. And Michael Fassbender's character is a soccer coach. He's from Europe and he has basically failed over the last couple of years at every team he's coached. He's gotten this reputation for being a horrible Bobby Knight style hothead mm -hmm. on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, American Soccer Association has basically fired him from all his jobs and said, look, we'll let you go take this job. And the reason for that is because his separated wife is on the American Coaches Committee and she's like, let's send him over here. Maybe it'll help him. He goes mm -hmm. there. He hates it. The The players are not talented at all. I mean, they're more interested in just having... <laughs> yeah, they're more interested in just having fun. Actually, the players that he coaches, none of them were on the 31-0 and 0 team. All oh, okay. those guys quit. So <laughs> the only ones that are left are new <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, it, it just tells a heartwarming story. But I will say, Michael Fassbender's acting is fucking awful. Off 89 <laughs> really? minutes of this film. Awful. It's awful. It is. How so? It's flat. It's mm. it's pale. It's It doesn't feel natural at all. There's like, it feels like somebody trying to act like a guy they've met. That's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. However, the last five minutes of the film brought tears to my eyes, as oh. you would hope in a good sports redemption yep. story, right? Yep. Um, all of the stuff that happens in it, it's beautifully laid out. It's wonderfully shot. Taiko Waititi does the tremendous job that he always does with any film that he's a part of. The characters, other than Michael Fassbender's character, you feel for them. You want things to happen. There is a transgender uh, character in the film who that's based on a real transgender character, mm -hmm. one of the first mm -hmm. to ever compete in World Cup, which is um, a whole unique story in and of itself. Uh, they pay proper respect to the entire storyline. I don't want to ruin it for you, but the reason why it says next goal win is the title is because he's hired by the American Samoan soccer president guy, who's also the cameraman of the most famous TV show on the island. Okay. And he also <laughs> runs a restaurant on the island. A multitasker. <laughs> and right. he's mayor. <laughs> exactly. He just, all he and wants is one. And just the piece. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He just wants his team to score one goal. Oh, That's oh. it. They've never scored a goal in they international competition <laughs> ever. Oh God, so the bar is low. A goal. He just wants one goal. And they've never and scored a they goal. They tell the story. They show the whole thing through. Uh, he has, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm going to tell you the whole movie if I keep going on. It's worth a watch. <laughs> Don't go watch it for Michael Fassbender, though. Go watch it for all the other actors who are Native American Samoans who are fucking awesome. Every mm. single one of them is wonderful in their roles. 
And it's just one of those good Rudy style uplifting sports films. Okay. That I love those, especially yeah, as a person who doesn't like sports. That's not fair to say I don't like it. I'm not enthusiastic about sports. I am enthusiastic about, especially an underdog sports movie. Just mm-hmm. the, the nuts and bolts of those mm-hmm. are awesome. They can pull your heartstrings or feel good. Yeah. Yeah. We should go on record. Look, all three of us had highly recommended great stuff in this media segment. So yeah. it's a red letter day. A lot of stuff. <laughs> the sun ted and next goal wins all right let's see if we can do as well with our tech segment right Mm. after this break (laughs) most says maybe not (laughs) greetings from evergreen podcasts we're rolling out a listener survey and we want to hear from you the information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers i know most people don't like ads But this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. Black & Decker's automatic shut-off iron. Because even those with the best memories can forget to turn their irons off. Oh, thank you. My Black & Decker's Space Maker Coffee Maker bounce over your counter. So it not only makes great coffee, it leaves plenty of room for dessert. The Space Maker Coffee Maker and the automatic shut-off iron. Now from Black & Decker, ideas at work. So my tech and toy discussion is going to be a bit of a rant. So I'm going to save myself for last because... Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going right. to rant. George, I'm going to channel my George in this one here. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Mo, but, if you don't express, if you don't claim some bullshit, I'm going to call shenanigans on you. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, there's tons. But anyway, okay. so let's kick, let's, let's kick off with George and hopefully he has something nice that, you know, kind of <laughs> a palate cleanser to start us off. Good. Okay. A palate cleanser to start. Yeah. I mean, I guess that would be an appropriate description of this uh, tech and toy. So it's both, it's a tech and a toy. I wanted to talk a little bit about the My Arcade Galaga Pocket Player Pro. It's a mm-hmm. long goddamn name. Isn't but, it? Wow. <laughs> John talked about these things. He got a few of them from my arcade when they first came out. And I would just wanted to give a quick heartfelt thanks to the folks at my arcade. Mm. They actually sent me a care package, if you will, because they found out about grace being uh, mm-hmm. in the hospital, having all the medical issues she's dealing with. And mm-hmm. they sent me like six or seven different items of wow. stuff That's from awesome. their catalog. This my arcade Galaga pocket player pro was one of them. And I had really wanted one because originally when John first got his, we were going to be flying to Vegas. And from his video review, it appeared to me that that would be one of the best on plane game playing things I could have because it had Galaga, it had Galaxian, two games I love. And it's a simple form factor. It looked like it behaved well, and it does. It's a beautiful little system. I don't know how much they're selling for anymore. I guess they're probably around what, John, like thirty-five bucks or so, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, 40? I think when they released new, they were thirty-nine dollars, and now on Amazon gotcha. regularly, they're like thirty-four, thirty-five bucks. Yep, they are worth every penny of that. At least this one is that I can say. They sent me some other stuff too. They sent me a Tetris one of the same design. They sent me their Street Fighter to a nice one from a few years ago Mm. that they've redone Mm -hmm. recently. Uh, Mo, they sent me the Space Invaders one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give that to you because you're the one of the three of us that don't already own that one. Oh, the nice one, like the 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 premium one. The you can look into the premium Space Invaders oh, with wow, the that was a great with the that. mirrored that screen and one. everything. <laughs> yeah, so just super nice guys. I don't want to go on for too long because I really want to get to. I want to hear what Mo's upset me about too. whatever <laughs> this is. I'm I'm already invested. I, we can skip John for all I care at this point. <laughs> But it's a great design. It feels good in the hand. It plays well. The only thing, if if you got to give a little bit of a negative to it with bad eyesight like I have, mm, the bullets small. are kind of hard to see on the background. 
Yeah. That's the only thing. Other than that, beautiful, fun way to play Galaga and Galaxian. Nice. Something when we first got these and I was preparing to review them, this is the one that I, I we you and I got on a Zoom call because I'm like, okay, you mm-hmm. know Galaga better than anyone I know. And that was the <laughs> one that I opened up and I said, I want your, through the through the camera and the internet and digital you know compression, what did you think of this? Because it's not quite exactly the arcade Galaga, but it's really, really close. Now that you've had your hands on it, I mean, it sounds like like you didn't just rip it a new one, so it must be close. What is your feeling and impression about the iteration or interpretation of Galaga that they put on this little gadget? I mean, I I tend to look at Galaga toys that try to play the original arcade game in two ways. Number one, how does the music sound? If the music mm-hmm. sounds good, that's a good thing. If the music sounds bad, that's going to be awful for the the whole playing experience Mm -hmm. this one the music sounds really really good i really like it Uh, the second one that i use to judge it on is can i get a perfect on the first challenge stage oh okay Mm because if you can then you said it's actually pretty accurate then right exactly if i can get a perfect on the first challenge stage it's playable at least okay fair enough i 1000 percent can now, mm-hmm. their Galaga machine that they did send me that has the yoke flight stick thing, uh-huh. I have yet to get a perfect on the, any uh, of those challenge stages on different. that one because it's a yeah. different mm. play style. But on this one, it is 1,000% just as easy it is in the arcade for me to get a perfect on the first challenge stage. So yeah. that, to me, gives me the confidence to say, yes, this is worth going out and picking up. That's like a wet works test, right? It's like, it's your muscle memory testing mm-hmm. the hardware and software to mm-hmm. go, okay, I did what was in my, what was in my fingers and my brain and it worked. So the accuracy must be there. So that's, right. that's yeah. a good metric that I never yeah, considered. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Works for so, me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, we'll, I guess we'll let John say his name and then we'll move on to Mo, but go ahead, John. <laughs> Let's get to Hi, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm John. Mo? <laughs> Just, so, so what I want to share with you, it won't take very long because because I haven't yet got my fingers on it yet. You'll find out why in a second, but I want to tell you about it because it's exciting enough that I want to tell you about it. The next time we talk, I want to tell you about the experience of it, probably in a different segment. So I found this bundle called Exodos, E-X-O-D-O-S. Oh, like, like DOS DOS. Yeah. 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 I is, know what that ringing is. a bell already. Heard of it. Okay. Yeah. So a brand new version just came out. Exodos six. Here's what this package is. And I have gone down a rabbit hole to figure out what is going on with this. I've watched mm-hmm. videos by the guy Exo mm-hmm. who's created them. That's his online screen name. And it started some uh, 12, 15 years ago where he was on a forum and everybody was talking about these adventure games. And he said, oh, well, I have DOS box that I can run it in. And what if I like got them configured and working right and released a set of adventure games, like 10 mm-hmm. adventure games? And people loved it. And then they were like, well, how about some you know, of these strategy games? And people loved it. And it grew and it grew and it grew to this bundle called Exodos. So Mm -hmm. picture all of the games that we played before Windows on DOS computers. (gasps) Running from everything. And more. So (gasps) starting back to like maybe, (laughs) oh, you know, like the mid 80s when DOS was up when you had CGA Mm -hmm. graphics and EGA graphics all the way up until just before Windows, you know, maybe in Mm -hmm. 91, 92. There was almost 20 years there where we played DOS games. This bundle, when you download it, which, by the way, it is nearly 650 gigabytes to download. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it includes 76 hundred DOS games configured wow. to run, but not just the games, the games, the manuals, magazines full of reviews, games that had soundtracks, all the soundtracks, books that accompanied the games, strategy guides. It uses DOS box to run them. It uses an embedded version of launch box to view them and organize them. Mm-hmm. And for free, you download this one big torrent, 638 gigs. I'm Hold currently on. Let me start at that nine. Now. Hold on one second. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> the reason I'm not, I haven't played with it yet is I have nine hours left in my download. It's pretty slow to oh, trickle geez. in. And it's been downloaded for about three days. It's coming in. <laughs> but once you have it, I'm talking Day of the Tentacle, all the Star Wars King's games, Quest? King's Quest stuff, Carmageddon. Wow. It goes all the way up to the 3D FX accelerated mm-hmm. graphics stuff. Wow. All that stuff is in there. And in case it's not just as a little nugget, he's also working on Exo Win 3.1, doing a bundle of Windows 3.1 oh. as you move forward. 
this package is out. I can't, I can't conceive of what it's going to be when I finally get it, but I, it's going to consume my time. So I expect I'll talk about this in games in a few weeks, but right now. Assuming it's all downloaded by then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. Yeah. It's, if you think about the Atari 50 that we got from Digital Eclipse, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. it's that comprehensive, but for the DOS game world. Mm-hmm. So, Mo, I know you love mm. a ton of those because oh, that was yeah. kind of in the heyday of your at-home gaming experience, it right? It really was, yeah. So, Big time. Yeah. I don't know why I never thought about suggesting it to you before. I've watched over the last like month probably five, six videos about this product. Mm-hmm. It's freaking awesome. Mm. Yeah. Now, you can buy a bundle. Like, if you just want it shipped to you, it's not available mm-hmm. yet because it's new version. It's version six. But if you if you, if you you have a torrent application at all, just grab one. If, is this the only torrent you ever download? It's 7,600 games. You can delete it after that. You're done. But if that's the first time you used it. So check it out. We'll put a link in here. You go straight to the guy's site where you can go and find that and links to all of his other stuff. But ExoDOS, if you remember DOS Six. games, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm crazy. I know what I'm doing after this call. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so Mo, yes. that's all I had to talk about. We're ready for your George style oh, rant. Oh my Do God. Do not disappoint. <laughs> oh, I, I want. So a little background. So my daughter, without consulting me, bought her own, mm. own computer, which is fine. Okay. And she bought an Alienware. And I'm sure you guys are familiar right. with Alienware, right? Those, oh yeah. I've like, had a couple. Yeah. yeah. Had, and, and generally they're pretty solid three machines. three of them in our family? Yeah. It's generally pretty solid machines, right? And from day one, it ran like freaking horrible. Like it, to boot up now, to boot up a computer these days should take less than a minute normally, right? It oh, yeah. just, sure, just yeah. pop right up. Hers took like five or six minutes mm. just to get through it. And then so you call tech support. They basically did the whole, <laughs> oh, you have to get a solid state drive. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? Just to boot up Windows? Are you kidding me? So we wait, went to this whole- wait, It didn't have a solid state drive in an no, Alienware modern computer? No, That's ridiculous, not. number one. Okay. Okay. So- um, so anyway, so yeah, so then we went through a whole hassle with that. She finally got it done. And then she decided like, you know, after time, she says, okay, let me, now she got the computer a couple of years ago. So she wanted to do some upgrades on it. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, let's do an upgrade on it. So we <laughs> said, let's do a, you know, she said, let me get a new video card. She got the video card. <laughs> video card wouldn't fit in the case. Nope. <laughs> What? Right? Which is okay. Here's my George, which is some bullshit. <laughs> there it is. All right. Okay. And, and for people I know, they don't like profanity in this one. There's going to be a lot here. I'm just letting you know that now. <laughs> just FYI. Okay. So I said, you know what? I said, so the solution was okay, how about this? Get a new case and just move everything over, right? Get a, st- a okay. bigger case, right? Yeah. The freaking motherboard has. T- has specific screw holes that don't it's, fit mm-hmm. a standard case. It's non-standard. It's like an it's ATX non-standard, motherboard. non-standard, which is also some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the power supply has custom holes for screwing uh, in the power supply. It won't fit. Okay. I'm like, looking at this thing. I'm like, are you kidding me? So basically they want you to go to them to do anything. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? I said, one, I think you probably overpay for the computer personally. Um, but mm. the idea that you could come up with something that is just so non-standard. On purpose. That on purpose. You know, even so at one point, like she said, OK, so she basically we, we resolved all that. So she basically still had her the old computer. She says, you know what? Let me just let me give it to the kids. Let me just put a new CPU in it. You know, and so the CPU, thankfully, that fit because that was freaking standard. Ugh. But the fan that goes on top of the CPU yeah. won't fit. You have to use their fan, which is some bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. In today's world, to come out with a computer that, that one, didn't run properly from the start and mm. that you basically are either you can never upgrade significantly. Like these days with most computers, like, you know, mm-hmm. a general first upgrade I do with the computer is get a new video card because yep. generally that will improve your performance pretty significantly, right? Just, mm-hmm. you know, and then eventually then get a new motherboard and all that stuff. But usually, you know, video you can't do that with this. And let me tell you, I was, and it took me forever because I was trying to figure out how to get all the stuff working. And then I started to realize that none of this was standard parts. Mm-hmm. None of this stuff was like, the case was like barely fit the stuff that was in it. So like when we finally did get a solid state drive, we were trying to figure out where the hell to put it. I mean, mm. it was just ridiculous. And Throw it out. <laughs> I think, I think for the money they charge right. and for what they deliver, I think that's just, I will never buy an Alienware computer again from this point on, mm. which is a bullshit, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody's always complaining that I get mad and yell and cuss. Doesn't it feel good? I do. I feel when better. When you have I, a reason. I got that off. Oh, my shoulders oh, relax. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I've dealt with Alienware 
from mm-hmm. the time that they were really Alienware up until pretty recently, because they're not really Alienware anymore. They're, no, they're Dell's version Dell, right? of yeah. Alienware because Dell acquired them. Uh, I actually got one of the last off the line true Alienware gaming laptops before they switched over to the Dell product. Okay. My sons who got their Alienware laptops like a couple of months later got the Dell versions. Ooh. So I've had my hands in both worlds and all of the things that you're complaining about, I have seen come to fruition on their gaming laptops. My gaming laptop still fucking works. The only thing that went bad in it was the <laughs> screen, which in a laptop is big admittedly, but yeah. That's not hard to deal with or hard it, right? to replace. You've got external monitors. You've got, yeah. you know, replacements. You can right, you're not dead in the water, at least. You, you, you right. can plug in a standard monitor, at least. <laughs> Their Alienware laptops have all died one death mm, or another. Really? And you think the desktop that you're talking about is difficult to deal with whenever oh, you're talking about laptop. expanding oh or anything like that. The laptops are not even close, like not even really being able to deal with memory expansions without asking or finding like some crazy subreddit somewhere. Yeah. It's silly. It's stupid, but they do it for a reason. They're mm-hmm. built for one type of consumer and that's the type of consumer who sees a name brand, but mm-hmm. doesn't really know know what they're going to get. Yeah. That's exactly what Alienware is built for. They're a profitability part of the Dell corporate infrastructure. They're only there to sell, 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 and to continue to sell every time you need something from them. That's why they make all the screw holes, you know, the way they do. That's (laughs) why they make all the case the way they do. Everything is built so that it can be name brand, but not work with anything else off the shelf. Yeah. And the thing is, I remember back when Alienware first started, and they were mm-hmm. like the gaming computers to get at the time. Yep. Right? They were, yep. but they were standard stuff. Like they weren't all custom back when they first came out. At least I don't remember them being. Like you could go there and do some upgrades on your own. You could do I some mean, change on your own. But they weren't. It was not even like the power supply was not like a bespoke power supply that only worked. No, on their no, system. they were. They were the the shells were custom. They were designed yes. to look They're pretty. Nice. Oh, yeah, right. they, they were designed. Really awesome. Yes. The yeah. interior guts were stuff that could work with anything else. Yes. Right. right. So and so I guess Dell decided to just go the other way. He said, "Just mm-hmm. oh, you're buying it because it's it's an Alienware and it has the pretty little alien." LED on it and all that fun stuff. But let me say, it was it was just so frustrating and dealing with their customer support too. Oh my God, that was also It's very another much nightmare. like Apple, but an Apple that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, with Apple, they say it just works. With Alienware, they can say Alienware, it just doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and don't call us. It'll just you know, upset you. <laughs> don't try to fix it. Just buy it. Oh God. <laughs> let me tell you. I have dealt with Dell customer support in my professional life for the mm-hmm. last 10 years. Love them, right? They They're awesome. are, without a <laughs> doubt, the worst customer support infrastructure. <laughs> However, they have great technicians when you can eventually get to get them. To one. So right. the people who have the tier two style knowledge, those people are excellent. But to get to them is just like wading through all your screw holes in your desktop. Kit. It's ridiculous. It's some bullshit. I'll yeah. give you that. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Now oh. we can move on to the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting days to get that off my chest. Coming up on 5-Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. Nobody has a tougher position than a pro defensive back. And nobody sweats more. But I don't shower with the odor of soap because I made a break from that stuff. A clean break with ivory. Look, what you see is basic natural soap. And what you get is an honest clean. Some soaps cover you with smelly perfumes or deodorants. That stuff doesn't get you clean. Ivory makes me feel clean and smell clean. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. No soap can get you cleaner, no matter who you're up against. This is the main event of the podcast. 
for the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! Time to talk about games. Two of us mm-hmm. have games today. One of us has a rant. You can guess which one of us that's going to be <laughs> without even worrying about trying to play the game. We're going to start with John, who's got something that has ties back to an old series, but looks new, maybe. I don't recognize mm-hmm. the name. Yeah, your assumptions are all correct. And I'm okay. Uh, so not it. I will not be the one with the rant. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, a brand new game just released. Now, what I can tell you is that I have only played the demo, which was wonderful. Uh, but Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is a brand uh. new title. Just released on Ubisoft. Well, that's, a, that's an old school. That's old school. Well, title. Prince of Persia certainly is. Written by Jordan Mechter, who did Karatika, same developer oh, who mm-hmm. did the original wow. Prince of Persia, same guy. So Prince of Persia has had a lot of great evolutions. The most notable for me was Sands of Time on the GameCube, where you had the Life is Strange mechanic where you could rewind time a little bit right. and undo a mistake you made and stuff like that. That was amazing. And then there have been some subpar ones. The thing that caught my attention here, a couple of things. Prince of Persia, it had a pedigree. I was interested. It's also labeled as a new modern Metroidvania, which Uh-oh. you guys know mm. I love my Metroidvanias. Oh, yeah. If you're not familiar, listener, a Metroidvania is a style of game. It's a mashup of Metroid and Castlevania, where you explore it's a big open map, but you gain abilities that you then come back to other parts of the map that you've already been to to unlock mm-hmm. places you have couldn't get to. And you're evolving your character and gaining skills and that kind of thing. Uh, so this Prince of Persia is very much like a shadow complex two and a half D oh. style game. Yeah, it got, oh, really? got most attention ooh, right ooh. away. Shadow we complex. both played that multiple times. Oh, yeah. So it is kind of a 2D platformer. But there are things in the foreground and background that you do interact with sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I played through the demo of this for about two hours. And now the demo, very smartly, what they did was they extracted parts of the game and assembled them into the demo. So you got to see a lot of pieces of the game without getting any of the depth of the story, just the setup for the story. So you got to see a lot of the game without spoiling any of the story yet. The only reason I didn't buy it yet is because it's a premium game as a Metroidvania at 50 bucks. Mm. So I want it, but I really want it for about 20 is what I'm waiting for. (laughs) But I can speak to the quality of what you want in a Prince of Persia game. You want puzzle solving. You want platforming. And you want all that cool parkour acrobatic spinning on dowels and bouncing off of walls and dodging spikes. It has all of that in this two and a half D environment. And the fluidity of the movement is it's almost it's almost like it's not a sprite. The the animation style is done such like maybe your individual character is a 3D polygon guy. Plus the mechanic throughout the game is that again, time has caused a problem. There's some frozen time and you'll sometimes Mm -hmm. there's a crumbling castle wall or something and you'll trigger this little thing and the wall will either uncrumble some or crumble some more and change where the platforms are so you can leap around. And the last thing I want to mention about it that is also the third pillar of a Prince of Persia game that you need, and that's good combat. So Mm -hmm. bad guys come up on you and it's very simple two button attacks, but you attack low, you attack high, you can slide under a guy and attack from underneath him. It's not complex combos, but it's, it's that kind of, if you button mash just the right speed, you get some really cool fast combos out of it. Okay. So playing the, I almost sprung for the full game, but it's irresponsible wow. of me okay. with just downloading these 7,300 DOS games that I should not <laughs> spend 50 bucks for one more game. But when it comes out full, you should at least look at the trailer that I'll, I'll, I'll give Mo the link to put in the description and go and get, get the demo. It's free on Steam to grab the, or not Steam, it's on Ubisoft only, correction. Uh, and you can play it there. Uh, if you enjoyed the Prince of Persia games in the past, I may have been disappointed with more recent ones that were a little yeah. bit, eh, not quite up to eh. the par of Sands of Time kind of thing prince of persia the lost crown not only have i enjoyed the trailer i could still look forward to it coming out at a lower price to play the full game it's definitely the kind of game that resonates with me if you like prince of persia games it might with you too so i want to bring it up and talk about george how about you certainly you can't be the one with a rant you have a great game to tell us about right Yeah, I have the rant, Um, (laughs) just in case anybody was unclear, but it's a good rant. Rants don't always have in most cases, they usually are, but in my case, they can be either way. All right. I'm not going to argue that one. But in my case, they can be either way. All right. I'm not going to argue that one. I 
think I've talked about this product in some tangent here or there on the show. I've certainly talked to you, John, quite a bit about it. Uh, Mo, I might have mentioned it to you as well. But there is a product that's out there that's totally free to use if you can figure out how to download it. (laughs) I say that caveat because it's a little complicated. They have not made it easy to find. I'll say that. Uh, that can allow you to play your entire Steam library, basically, on any device you own Mm -hmm. that has the ability to run an app or Windows or I pretty sure I saw Apple iOS kind of versions out there. It's called Steam Link. So not to bury the lead and drag it on forever, but it does exactly what the name implies. It links your device back to your Steam library and you run the application on your main gaming device. So in my case, that's a Windows PC that I have here in my uh, office. And this is where I have that super gaming rig with a super nice video card and all the RAM and everything mm-hmm. like that. Not an alienware. But <laughs> yeah. Not, <laughs> no, no, he said it works. It works most. So it okay. works. <laughs> it does. But oftentimes I want to play these games that I have from Steam on a different television, possibly like out in the living room, or mm-hmm. maybe okay. I'm remote, like when my wife is in the hospital and I want to play, you know, some of these games through some other setup, like with my phone. Well, with Steam Link, you can do that because it essentially just takes your device, connects it back to your gaming PC. The two pieces of software link up to each other, like basically form like a little VPN. Mm -hmm. And then they stream the game directly to your device that you're sitting in front of. Now, the first question everybody's going to ask, oh, what about the lag? What about the video quality? What about the audio? It's all seamless. I have yet to have a problem. The only difficulty that you're ever going to face is 1000% based on your internet speed connection. Oh, sure. Mm. The Steam Link itself and the software, if you have, I think it's up to 100 megabits is what you performs at best. But I've, I've played games at like 35 megabits per second, 40 megabits per second. Um, and played them well, not not the big Cyberpunk 2077. Those need more bandwidth, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they play seamlessly. They're beautiful. They play great. It's just like I'm sitting here in mm-hmm. front of this gaming PC. So you mentioned you say you play it like on your TV in the living room or something. Like, how mm-hmm. do you do that? Like, what's there's an app for your Fire Stick. Really? There's an app oh, really? for the Roku. Oh, yep. huh. oh, for like mm-hmm. because I, I was yeah. thinking you need some kind yeah. of at least a little gaming Computer. thing like a phone right. or exactly. something. But since it's all just no. streaming, what about a controller? It's all just streaming. Yeah, as long question, as it yeah. can handle the internet connection and yeah. the display out, which you know the the Fire Sticks like they're 4K rated now. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I mean, I I think I've even heard of an 8K one coming out soon if it's not already out. You have smart TVs that have those operating systems built into them. The app can be side loaded onto any of these devices. Huh, and interesting. There you go. Yeah. As hmm. Now, I will say you need a way to connect your controller to the device. Sometimes hmm. you might have to use a USB hub or you might need to use Bluetooth or something along those mm-hmm, lines. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Fire Sticks use Bluetooth. But yeah, you can play it on basically any device. Right now, what I do is I've been recently considering taking this PC out of the office and moving it across the hall to my studio because it gets very hot in here. This Mm -hmm. gaming PC Mm -hmm. puts off a lot of heat. But now I could move this over across the hall, stick a little laptop in here that is quiet and (laughs) And no games whatsoever (laughs) and play all those games from across the hall because I've got Cat 6 wiring throughout my house and never Mm -hmm. have to worry about it. Mm, that sounds pretty cool. You're just using like a standard Xbox One controller or something, just either mm-hmm. Bluetooth or plugged in. What do you play with your Steam? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Xbox so, controller. Same deal once you get hooked up. So it's yeah, almost transparent exactly. once you get streaming. That's I knew of it, but I've never really explored it and tried to use yeah, me it. Too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, necessity, right? I was in the hospital for right? a month and a half or something like that. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. there's a lot of times when she's asleep and I get tired of going to my bills spreadsheet for the 500th time. I want some, (laughs) you know, some way to relax my mind a little bit. Sure. So yeah, I sat there in the ICU of our local hospital playing Cyberpunk 2077 through Mm. my phone and an external monitor and a Bluetooth controller. Nice. Okay. (laughs) Very cool. Now I got something else to play with. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> Hopefully it will run okay on your Alienware. I'm not sure, but <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to check and see. You've got a game mode that yeah. I think John talked about in the tease that harkens back again to an older gaming series, yep. just like John's did, right? Absolutely. It's a new edition, I'm not sure what to call it, of Portal. We all love Portal, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Love Portal 2. So yep. it's called Portal Revolution. So okay. it was not written by the folks at Steam, but they completely authorize it. Like they are 100% behind it. Okay. The best thing is if you have Portal 2, it's free. Oh. It's just a mod. Ah. It's just a mod right. to Portal 2. Well, now it's you just got a my mod attention. to Portal 2. So you just download it. You just download <laughs> it and play. That's a good and price. It is a full another version of Portal. It's it's like another oh, really. It's a whole other thing. It's so basically it takes place between Portal 1 and 2, mm-hmm. where a, a different AI um wakes up and wakes you up to it says to test you to see if you're gonna be pump, become part of its human rescue team or something like that, because the whole place is falling apart. And yeah, need people yeah. to like do stuff and so of course it's portal there's the puzzles mm-hmm. and i really like this one because i played a couple other portal mods that have been out there and usually the puzzles are so freaking hard like that it seems to be that like they're trying to make a a, a puzzle that you can't figure out, right? That mm-hmm. it's like almost impossible to figure out. These are not that way. They're actually within reason. Like, you know, a couple of them like were challenging. Then once I figured out, like the light bulb went off, I was able yep. to, you know, I got that nice satisfaction, but I wasn't spending like three days on it, you know, or mm-hmm. looking on the internet to find a solution. It's cool because this one takes place inside the portal world, I guess you would call it. Mm-hmm. But there's times where you actually can see the sky because- oh. Yeah. The roof had caved in yeah. and the guy takes you up and there's rooms you're going through that have like vegetation growing and mm-hmm. all that stuff. It uses all the mechanics from Portal 2. So you have things like the bounce gel and right. the zero friction gel and mm-hmm. the light bridges <laughs> and stuff like that. So that's all there. And it's let me tell you, it's it's all this with this whole story that, you know, it basically after you get through the first couple of challenges, he's trying to get you to the place to fix everything. And But of course, through that, then sometimes you have to go behind the scenes and you're walking behind the scenes trying to figure out how to get through something and then you get back into the puzzle area and the guy's like oh now i could see you you know you have to get through this and you know blah 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 i think it's something like i think they said seven hours or eight hours of that's play a good time size that's this. a good size at least for grown-ups that's a good size right i don't need 60 yeah. hour adventures right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so it's a substantial like addition like you know it's not something you're gonna blow through it in an hour mm-hmm. and be done and let me tell you i'm playing this thing one it just works again it just works seamlessly yeah. it's just fun as hell because it definitely you feel like you're back in the portal world yeah which i really enjoyed they have a new ai personality he's not quite as snarky as the other ones but you know he's entertaining <laughs> enough <laughs> you know but again like the fact that you're kind of going behind the scenes the whole place is crumbling you know you're gonna fail because portal 2 <laughs> happens <laughs> right yeah all right. <laughs> right but even knowing all that it's like still that like, the fact that you're, you're you're trying to fix things or you're trying to yeah. are eventually going to help him fix stuff i haven't even gotten that far yet i'm still getting through some of the puzzles but let me tell you this is one of those things that if you start playing it it's definitely gonna be like a time suck and it's gonna be prepared mm-hmm. for at least an hour or so of play when you first get your hands on it yeah that, that's neat slotting in there and filling in the middle ground i, mm-hmm. I didn't know just going to be a set of puzzles or whatever but there's actually there's like a story there's, there's something going story. on that contributes yeah. to the the mythology of portal 2 on yeah. top of some good gameplay all right and free so and that's free. a no-brainer i'm in oh yeah <laughs> okay in fact, when you wake up you wake up in the same room as the character from portal 2 mm-hmm. oh yeah uh, except your your bed doesn't have the indentation in it from your body because <laughs> <so long. laughs> you haven't been there for so long you haven't been there as long <laughs> You know, a lot can happen in seven minutes, and luckily, that's how long it takes me to tell a story. My name is Aaron Califato, and I'm the creator of 7-Minute Stories. I'm proud to partner with Evergreen Podcasts, and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. I'm going to take you on some crazy roller coaster rides using my unique extemporaneous storytelling style, and together, we're going to try to make sense of the world, all through the art of storytelling, and all in approximately seven minutes. If you're a die-hard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Things sweetened with 100% NutraSweet display the 100% NutraSweet symbol. A little red swirl next to the words NutraSweet brand sweetener. The 100% symbol means low calorie without saccharin and great taste without any sugar added. 100% NutraSweet. Why some things taste better than others. 
Before we get out of this episode, you know, we always like to take a few minutes here toward the end to talk about the things we're either looking at now or looking forward to between now and the next time we get together to speak. And George, why don't we start with you? What do you have coming up? Um, it's a it's a very dry time in the world of entertainment right now. Mm-hmm. So it I is, yeah. didn't really find anything that I was looking forward to. I'm already watching a lot of stuff that I'm catching up on or that stuff that just got introduced to me through the Discord server. Um, but the thing that I'm most looking forward to is the day that this podcast drops, January 25th of 2024, my wife is set to be discharged from inpatient therapy and coming mm-hmm. home. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm also scared shitless because, you know, this will be the first time in two months or more that wow. she won't have full-time medical personnel around her. And mm-hmm. even though she is getting better and, you know, out of the woods of danger of, you know, passing away or anything like that, thank God. I'm, you know, this could still happen again. There's no guarantees. And so I'm just scared. Um, There's a couple of weird little caveats, like our insurance will provide a bunch of equipment for us to have here at the home. She'll actually get a medical style bed here Mm -hmm. at the house. Mm -hmm. She'll get a wheelchair. She'll get one of these things that can help her in the bathroom and stuff. Oddly enough, though, they're not going to send that stuff until the day she comes home. And I'm like, how in the hell are we supposed to prepare (laughs) while I'm bringing her home and the equipment? It makes no logical sense to me. So I'm going to learn more about that this Mm -hmm. upcoming week. Um, I've taken some time off from work again to try and Mm -hmm. be here uh, to make sure that I can help her transition as quickly and easily to the home. We're going to have in-home therapy going on for a little while. Um, As she gets a little bit better, we're going to move over to outpatient therapy Mm -hmm. where we take her to a facility. But the good thing is, barring any knock on wood unforeseen circumstances, she will get to now be home, mm-hmm. which great. Mm. I know makes her very happy. Uh, she woke up yesterday crying because she thought yesterday was the 25th. Oh. She still gets a little confused on that stuff. And when they yeah. told her it wasn't, you know, that upset her. her. But by the afternoon, she was good. Uh, I posted in our Discord server just last night. I actually, I've been trying to post a video that I took earlier this week of her walking. Couldn't do it because the file was too large. So I said, fuck it. I'll just buy the nitro thing. And now <laughs> I can post did? the video file. Oh, <laughs> so stuck I, June, I, finally. That's, that's the only reason I bought the nitro thing was just to uh, post her video. They but gotcha. I'm so proud of mm-hmm. the uh, the work she's done. Oh, the yeah, improvements that she's made. She's tough as nails as she's always been. She's got her sense of humor back. She laughs again, which is great. So I'm just, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. There's no point in looking forward to a TV show or a movie <laughs> or a video game okay. when I will be time to do that later. Home. Yeah. 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 It's so awesome. That's it for me, John. Yeah. Hopefully you have something just as weighty and meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not at all. <laughs> no pressure. Speaking of, speaking of tough as nails, George, th- through this whole thing, you have been a champion and you've really stepped up to take care of your family beyond what you always already did yeah. is inspiring so you should pat yourself on the back too we're really happy Thank happy you. for grace and for your family that's things are getting better uh yeah great um so the the trivial little tv crap that i have to look forward to that it's not so weighty <laughs> uh a couple of animated things first is an animated series called grimsburg uh coming hmm. to fox uh, it actually started on january 7th but i had just heard about it okay and uh starring john ham so i'll just read oh. you the, just a sentence from the introduction uh marvin flute may be the greatest detective ever to catch a cannibal clown or correctly identify a mid-century modern armoire but there's one mystery he still can't crack his family so <laughs> Okay. <laughs> He's some kind of a hard-boiled detective who has a dysfunctional family. And uh, anyway, sounds cute. Uh, I haven't started watching it yet, but it's available now. It started streaming now on Fox. You can catch it. Uh, the next one I'm interested in is uh, a, a film called Orion and the Dark. It's coming to Netflix on February okay. 2nd. It's an animated series about a young boy named Orion who is deathly afraid of everything, spiders and everything, but mostly he's afraid of the dark. And in a very kind of Disney-esque kind of way, the dark becomes a 
character, like this anthropomorphized black cloud oh, that befriends him, that shows him how to get over his fear of things. So it's his relationship with the entity the that is darkness. And it looks really cute. The animation style is kind of reminds me of, um, oh, what was the uh, uh, the one with all the emotions, the, di- the Disney film with all the Inside emotions? Out. Inside Out. Remind me that oh, look. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. So that looked cute. Uh, and of course, if ever my download finishes, I'm looking forward to playing some stuff on Exodus. <laughs> uh, 7,600 plus games to look at, soundtracks, magazines, all that. It's going to consume more time than I would like it to, but I'm really excited to dig into that a little bit deeper. Mo, how about you? What do you have coming up? <laughs> Wow. So again, you know, in the scope of everything else, this seems really trivial, but I'm going to be watching. Um, there's a new show on Apple TV called Masters of the Air. It's about the pilots of World War II, and it's done by the same group that did Band of Brothers. Ooh, it's the okay. same ah. production. So look, that looks really, I really love Band of Brothers. So this looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, really looking forward to the return of Abbott Elementary season three because oh, of the really? writer's strike. Wow. Yeah. yeah it has not come back. Three. So it's coming back wow. February 7th, uh, ABC. And what I'm most looking forward to is that uh, basically I got a little mini vacation coming up for my, I'll be gone from my birthday so i'm gonna be taking off a few days and we're gonna head down to key west so just looking going down there and just relaxing oh the keys are a great place that is such a like a different gear when you go down to the keys it's so nice yeah that's good that's it (laughs) yep (laughs) (laughs) that's it you got it be fun all right before we wrap it up just a couple more bits of business to talk about one of course is to send a heartfelt thanks all to all of our amazing supporters over on Patreon at GenXGrownUp.com slash Patreon, who give us just a few bucks a month to support what we do here. Look, we give it away for free, but these are folks that believe in us and want to support what we do. If you'd like to join them, it is so easy. Just head over to Patreon.com slash GenXGrownUp. Uh, op- uh, log in, open up your wallet for as little as a dollar a month. You can become part of our Patreon supporting crew. And if you are a Patreon supporter, there's an opportunity for you to participate in this segment of the show where you can put a question uh, posed to us. And Mo, do we have a question from a patron yes, this time do. around? we have a question this okay. week. So it's right. from Joe, and his question is actually pretty straightforward. What was your very first job? But mm. they threw a caveat in there. They said, for George, it can't be part of a family <laughs> business. Because <laughs> oh, apparently, yeah. they, apparently they've heard this podcast plenty of times. They definitely <laughs> know. Joe so <laughs> knows the score. He's been <laughs> here know, before. <laughs> they know, right, that, you know about that part. So with that one, so uh, John, do you want to kick us off on that one? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also had some little family business things Things. My mom had a like a mail preparation and mailing business that she did through her company, but th- that doesn't count, right? So it doesn't actually, count. I, th- I think my first, to the best of my recollection, my first like paid regular job was working room service at a hotel one mile from the Walt Disney World entrance on Earlo Bronson mm. Memorial Ooh. Highway. And as a kid, I was like 18, 19. I loved it because you st- sat around the kitchen cutting up with the other waiters until the phone rang. You took the order and then you got to drive this little golf cart down this long property of this hotel, <laughs> walk up some stairs, deliver food. It'd be, you only have to be nice for like 30 seconds. And then you go back to just being a kid and cutting up with your friends. Uh, it was good money. It was a tipped job. So oh, after yeah. a week of work, I'd have a hundred bucks in my pocket, which, you know, you in 1988 was a lot of money awesome. to have in your pocket as a kid. Oh yeah, uh, And I loved it. In fact, I did it all the way through college until I got out of college and graduated. I worked room service on and off. I loved that as a job. Yeah. Cool. Wow. So I'll go next one. So my, my first job was in high school. I got a job at a drugstore in their stock room. Mm. It was like, oh. it was, uh, and it was actually, it was actually a pretty cool job. The guys who worked on the stock room, they were like, I think they honestly worked about four hours a day. If that. <laughs> <laughs> because once you're in a stock room, nobody sees what you're doing. <laughs> nobody so, wants to go in there. Right. His yeah. work. <laughs> so basically, you know, you worked when, you know, deliveries came in and you had to fill up the stock room. Then you had to go fill up the shelves upstairs twice a day. But other than that, we just sort of hung out <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Nice. Wow. Um, and let me say, but it was a good job. It was after school, you know, so I only worked, you know, maybe 12 hours, 15 hours a week tops. But mm-hmm. again, it gave me enough money that I could buy all my D&D supplies and, and for the arcade, you know, <laughs> sure. which is pretty much all the money I needed back then. So that was my first job. So how about you, George? Yeah, well, uh, obviously I have the caveat, right? They yep. don't want me to talk about the family business, which is fine. I don't want to talk about that shit either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> enough. <laughs> Uh, my first job outside of family business, I worked for a grocery chain here in the Southeast. I think they're in a lot of places now, uh, Albertsons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it was an easy transition. We had the family grocery store, so <laughs> yeah. and Do I don't want to work there anymore. <laughs> I was like 15 years old, I think. Maybe I just turned 16 because I was driving to the job, but... Uh, I worked there as a bag boy. So mm. I would just bag your groceries, take them out of the car. The only 
Uh, interesting story that I remember is number one, I was paid minimum wage, which I went back and looked it up at that time uh, because they say, how much did you get paid? Six, um, six bucks? In the question. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I was uh, making minimum wage in Florida, which was $3.35 an hour. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Dang. So crazy low money compared to what people might think today. It's equal to about $8 in today's dollars. <sighs> I looked it up. Yeah. But, there was one time I was my second day there. I was taking the groceries out for this sweet old lady out to her car and I took the groceries out with her, put her in the trunk. And, uh, then she turned around and immediately handed me a $5 bill as a tip. Mm-hmm. And I was nice. like, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to accept tips. Cause they given us that in the employee, you know, video mm-hmm. bullshit that mm-hmm. in the eighties, mm-hmm. you always had to watch that stupid employee video. right? <laughs> and so I was, Oh, I can't accept it. And she said, no, no, I insist. Well, the videos actually said if the person insists rather than argue with them, accept the tip, bring it back to the store and give it to your manager of the day uh, because that's mm, proper procedure. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, uh, okay. Mm. So yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm trying to be a good employee. I want this new job. Right. So I accept the five dollars. I go in, I hand it to my manager. That motherfucker put that shit right in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. Right in front of me. There was a lesson I said, for that you. That doesn't go to corporate or whatever. No, <laughs> fuck that shit. So I took every Absolutely. tip from that point forward. <laughs> I used to get probably 40 bucks a week. Not close to John's hundred, but still, I yeah. made my money. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say like because I, I forgot about that part, but yeah, I, I guess I started working just a little bit earlier than you because my minimum wage was three fifteen. Three fifteen. Oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. then then it went up to three thirty five, which I was like, ooh, an extra dollar for every three hours I work, yay! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was uh, but yeah, I mean, so I think ultimately before I left there, I think I was making maybe four bucks an hour. Mm, really? Yeah. yeah. As a tipped employee, I want to say my base wage was like two oh five. No, but then right, you got you tipped. got tips, right? Tipped employees. So, yeah. Cool. Oh, I didn't know. All, see there, we've learned more about each other. I didn't know about those early jobs. I, I vaguely <laughs> maybe knew you worked for Albertsons, but certainly didn't know the tipping story. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. All right. That's going to wrap it up for another edition of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. Don't worry. We'll be back in a few weeks with another one. And next week is our backtrack. We pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. And next week, we're talking all about the required reading when we were in school, the books mm. they made you read or they tested you on or... Look, it shaped us as readers, whether we developed an affinity for or a hatred for reading or books. It certainly (laughs) contributed to that. So we're going to remember and talk about the experience in school growing up as Gen Xers with required reading. You don't want to miss that one. Should be a good time. Until then, I'm John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you, man. Always fun, man. Fourth listener, it's you we all appreciate most of all, though. And we can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. I don't blame you. That's word. That's worded a little odd, but that was the best I could come up with to get new <laughs> and fresh and fresh and I don't know. Yeah, it, it worked out. Okay. You know, a lot can happen in seven minutes, and luckily. That's how long it takes me to tell a story. My name is Aaron Califato, and I'm the creator of 7-Minute Stories. I'm proud to partner with Evergreen Podcasts, and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. I'm going to take you on some crazy roller coaster rides using my unique extemporaneous storytelling style, and together, we're going to try to make sense of the world, all through the art of storytelling, and all in approximately 7 minutes.